Hello, my name is Kathy Lynch. I am the chair of the Westford Republican Town Committee and the new host for the Second Opinion Show. Today we have a guest, Scott Hazelton. He is a current selectman and he is uh, running for office again to be a selectman. So I want to ask him a few questions today. Hello, Scott. Hello. How are you? How are you? The old handshake. First thing is, Scott, how many years have you already been a selectman and how long is the term for? So the term is three years. Um, I've, I've finished my second term, so six years. So you're finishing your sixth year Sec and you're, right, yes. you're going to go for nine. That's the, pl that's that's the plan. That's the plan, yeah. okay. Uh, what exactly does a selectman do? So if you want to think of it in terms of government, the selectman is the executive branch, town meeting is the legislative branch. So um, we, we, we would set the budget, which town meeting then approves. Uh, we set policy. Um, and if you think about a company, we're sort of the board of directors, if you will, in terms of uh, you know, guiding the town in terms of policy. We have a town manager who runs it day to day. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, fundamentally, in terms of, of operations, it's, uh, it's our job to keep the town a going, going concern. It's a very powerful job, isn't it? Um, I don't know about powerful as much as it is res you know, responsible. Responsible. Um, but there's, there's five of us that, uh, that, that do that and collectively um, with a lot of support from town staff. I mean, there's a, we've got great uh, town manager, budget director, um, treasurer, so we've got lots of uh, good folks helping us make good decisions. Now, would you call yourself a politician in this role? I wouldn't. Um, I, I don't think anyone on the Board would, would consider themselves politicians. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a it's a volunteer board like any other. Just we just have to get elected to do it, as opposed to be appointed for it. But it's a it's a, a role we take pretty seriously as a service back to the community. Okay, so the budget process for fiscal year 2019-2020 indicated that money was very tight. Do you anticipate an even tighter budget next year? And if so, do you anticipate an override? Um, tighter, probably not. Tight, probably yes. Um, you know, the, so the town budget, essentially, you've, you've got a, um, a revenue base from you know, the, the, the current year or the prior year, and you add to that, um, if you want, 2.5% for the levy limit, plus new growth, which could be typically new construction, but it could be even like new cars and additions to hotel tax, room tax. Um, and so you can kind of try to forecast where your revenues are to make sure your budget is, is balanced. Mm -hmm. And as we look at the, the future, you know, we, we do see some gr town growth coming in, um, but not you know, millions. So yeah, I think it'll be a, a tight budget, but we've had tight budgets for, for a while. We've managed to avoid overrides, apart from the, the teachers, which was a different rationale. That was not a budget problem, that was a, a, a salary adjustment decision. Um, so I don't foresee a reason for an override right now. Um, the budget process starts really in August, it hits its peak um, November through February is when you have all the joint boards, the selectmen, FinCom, department heads, and we go through it, um, you know, uh, with a fine tooth comb. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll know more then, but I don't right now see a, a threat of an override now. Mm -hmm. Okay. At town meeting, there was a measure put forth and backed by the selectmen to create an enterprise fund that would be funded in part through a mandatory fee. The town rejected this idea at town meeting. Is it your position that fees and mandates from state or local government should simply be passed down to taxpayers, um, you know, without question? So, first of all, so the selectman proposed a um, enterprise fund for stormwater. There was no funding mechanism attached. We basically were saying we want to open up a blank checking account. We'll determine later how to fund it. So there was no mandatory fee. We had a, a, um, a range of possible funding mechanisms, which could have been taxation or fees or a combination thereof, but we didn't recommend a fee. In fact, we have not recommended a, a funding mechanism yet. We're still um, you know, researching what is best for the town. Um, so the, the town meeting discussion, discussion was about a, um, <coughs> this, of a fund being set up to sort of track you know, expenses. Um, and secondly, it's, an, it's a mandate from the federal government. It's a federal EPA mandate, not state or local. Um, <clears throat> is, is that a government mandate or is that um, an unelected board, the Environmental Protection Agency? Well, the EPA is certainly, it has, it's empowered by 
Congress. I mean, it was created under President Nixon. It's uh, <coughs> in, in, in Congress, so it's empowered as regulatory authority. They've got the um, you know the right to promote <coughs> regulations. Um, the town has to get a storm has to get a water permit. You know, every I think it's three years, um, and it's always attached to that. You know, um, a set of stipulations. Those have become more um, stringent um, with the, with the current permit. So that, that's not just true for us. It's true. Of, I think it's 240 towns, um, roughly in the Commonwealth, that have the same problem. And um, you know, it's not really an option not to fund it. So uh, it's a question of how do we do it? Do that with the least impact to our budget and the least impact to the taxpayers. Do you think there's ever a chance to, uh, for the people to push back on any of these mandates? Is it it's, uh, something people can do or should do? Well, <coughs> um, when a regulatory agency, any, any of them, but EPA in particular, um, tells you to do something, or in, in fact, it's, it's regulations. There's no specific, um, sort of, of items we have to do, it's, it's, it's more rules you have to follow. And how you do that is to raise a little bit of flexibility. And if you do it on your own, um, you have the flexibility within those rules to do it. If you decide to defy them, um, you know, they will come in and tell you how to do it. So you're better off to do it as, you know, um, as best you can within um, you know, that, those parameters as opposed to trying to get a consent decree and you've got no choice. So no, I don't think it's advisable to try to defy the EPA, no. <coughs> Okay. Um, how can we support a tax override or a fee for storm water given the information received from the Senior Low Income Disabled Tax Relief Committee, now that's a mouthful right there, about the number of seniors who are living on the financial borderline faced with the choice of increasing their financial burden or moving out? So it's, it's a slider, it rolls off the tongue yeah. easier to call it slider. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, that's one of the discussions about fee versus tax. If you if you did it through a taxation question, you have the option to um, not tax certain um, segments of the, of the town, um, nonprofits, for example. Um, you mentioned seniors. You're the Western Housing Authority. The the, the historical society. There were, there were various various nonprofits in town that would have an issue with um, a fee on possibly a large amount of land. Then uh, taxation lets you sort of bypass that. However, with the fee structure, there's also ways to <coughs> um, minimize that impact. In fact, uh, we're <coughs> working with our uh, town engineer and with our consultant now on how that would look, but there are ways to mitigate stormwater. Uh, if your driveway is gravel and not asphalt, there's no, no, no fee because it's not impervious. Um, you know, if you had rain barrels off your roof, um, the water's being controlled, it's not runoff. So there's, there's ways which you can work as credits to offset the, the fee. Uh, which we're also taking a look at. So, um, you know, we're not envisioning necessarily that anybody who is on a fixed income would be, <coughs> um, you know, put in a, in a position of, of paying the entire amount. There's ways to mitigate that. Hmm. So I think you're going to see a lot of driveways that turn into gravel. <laughs> well, of course, there's a cost <laughs> of doing that. And, and, you know, and, and if you remember from town meeting, um, you know, if, if it were a fee, and we've not even... You know, as part of the budget process, we'll work out exactly what the cost is. Um, <clears throat> that's not determined yet either. But you know, at town meeting, we'd, we'd mention a number of a million dollars, and it may be less than that. Um, and at that point, the lowest, I think, fee tier was $45 a year. So at some point, you have to think about the fact, is it worth temporary driveway and gravel for $45 a year? Uh, probably not. So um, you know, this, this is not meant to be a... Um, a high cost item, because we're on the edge. Any any money is high cost, but um, at the lower end of the fee structure, it's relatively um, relatively inexpensive. I mean, it does sound like you have to pay one way or the other, fee or tax. I mean, or you yeah. might get some funding, maybe from the government, perhaps a kickback, but primarily you're going to go to the the town residents. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't sort of call the kickback from the government. Yeah, it'd be a it'd be a, a grant or some other. Um, that's that's but, yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that is that certainly is a it's a possibility. Another possibility is um, you know the MMA, the Massachusetts Municipal Association, has proposed um, a local options gas tax um, for infrastructure purposes. So conceivably, you could pass a um, a few cents a gallon gas tax. Which case, if you did that, um, 
the fee is paid for by anybody who comes into Westford. So if you think about the fact that um, much of our impervious surface is roads, you could make a case that perhaps uh, um, automobiles should be paying part of that tax and minimize or eliminate the cost to homeowners. But that's all to be determined um, over the next over the course of the summer. In fact, we, we were discussing, we discussed it last Tuesday at our meeting. It's not the agenda for the 23rd, but the first meeting of May, it's back on the agenda again. So <coughs> if you're interested, come by and, and listen in. And we're actually asking for input from citizens. So by all means, come by and tell us what you think. Okay, great. Now, uh, I also understand that you are on the Building Security Committee. The town committed 200,000 to support security measures. So how is that going? Um, what do you see as the priorities in this committee? Where would the money be going to first? Okay, so there's, yeah, there's no great acronym. This is it's, it's the Town and School Safety Task Force, um, TSSTF, which is not, doesn't really roll off the tongue either. Um, so it's not just town buildings. It's, in fact, it's mostly school buildings. This was created in response to um, the Parkland um, tragedy about a year ago. It was uh, top of mind at town meeting last year. The residents wanted us to do something and we, the selectmen said, we'll um, come back to you with a plan in, in, the, in the fall, <coughs> fall town meeting. And that plan was, this, this task force is composed of two selectmen, myself and Tom Clay, um, the police chief, the fire chief, town manager, superintendent of schools, Bill Olson, um, Avery Adam, chairman of the school committee, um, Denise Pigeon, who's the principal, sorry, superintendent of uh, Neshoba Tech. So we got a pretty broad spectrum of, oh, and um, um, uh, uh, Katrina <coughs> Green from um, the finance, finance committee as well. So we got a, a blend of selectmen, Christina Green, I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> cameras do things to me. <laughs> um, so we got a broad spectrum of, of selectmen, the finance committee, public safety, town management, um, and so the, for the first process, the first money spent from fall town meeting was to do a f facility study. So we took a look, we had a consultant, look at all of our schools and then some key town buildings, the town hall, library, um, Rodenbush, Frost, Cameron, um, <coughs> senior, senior center, with a view towards um, you know, thinking about how to make them you know, safer, what are best practices for um, security and, and uh, also, all the schools we'll take, we'll take a look at. Now, we're going to have that report, in fact, tomorrow morning. Um, the consultants reporting back to, the, to our task force with their report, initial, initial findings. We get to ask some questions. Um, I believe April 23rd, in front of the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee and the Joint Boards as well. Um, they can ask questions, and then in May, we'll see the report. Um, we're also working on a wellness piece. That was building security. The wellness piece is really more of, of um, your mental health, how do we identify perhaps people who are troubled ahead of time, intervene, help them out before they become um, you know, involved in a, perhaps an, an unfortunate event. Um, so the $200,000 we got at town meeting is for capital. Um, you know, I suspect, but we'll know more perhaps tomorrow in terms of prioritizing the budget, but I suspect it'll be spent on communications. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're, gonna, we're gonna have sort of two reports. One report, it'll be for as much as we can tell the public um, about what we've learned and what we need to do moving forward, there'll be a more detailed report, which will explain what we have to do and, and why. That may be only seen by police chief, fire chief, town manager, and school superintendent, because we're not gonna tell the world where our weaknesses are. Um, <clears throat> but that'll be our operating plan to work from to set priorities for budgets. And I think just what, what we've heard so far um, you know, you can never have too much communication. That's probably is the weakest link um, as, as a whole across the system. We'll probably want to spend money there first, uh, but we'll see tomorrow morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Great. So at the town meeting, we might have a report on progress. Oh, certainly at yeah. the fall town meeting, we'll have a report. Um, I think we'll have one before that. If you watch the Sluckman's meeting, um, probably late May or June, we'll probably have that report for the public, yeah. That'd be interesting. So as chair of the Westford Republican Town Committee, I get questions asked of me that I cannot answer, but perhaps you as a selectman can. A few years back, the Lowell Sun reported missing money from the Westford Police Evidence Room. The Attorney General was doing an investigation on the matter. Uh, was the case closed, and can you tell me the outcome of that investigation? Um, 
no, I can't. Um, you know, we, I would say it was appropriate for the police chief to bring in the AG. Uh, they could run an investigation that was you know, professional and uh, dispassionate, <clears throat> but you know, they did request that we not comment, and so I, I won't. I will, I will say that we you know, have new policies and procedures so that this can't happen again, but beyond that, I'm, I can't say anything. A joint meeting of the Selectmen and Finance Committee indicated that the town is losing money on the ambulance fund um, to the tune of about $200,000 a year. Uh, can you confirm that and what can be done about that? Well, the ambulance fund is not meant to be um, self-sustaining. So <clears throat> we, um, we have a fire department with a paramedic service and the ambulance fund is when you call the ambulance, you get transported. If you have insurance, we bill your insurance. Um, that is paid into the enterprise fund. If you've got private pay, you may personally be paying into that fund. Um, but it's a, it's a holding center for, for the money, which is then used to offset the cost of providing paramedic service uh, to the town. Now, the paramedics are also cross-trained as firefighters. They man the area ladder. So what is really happening is we're using the paramedics um, and an accounting mechanism to sort of use our um, revenue from uh, ambulance calls to offset the cost of running a fire department. And it's not really a case of, of losing $200,000, it's more a case of, of um, making sure that the money coming in through ambulance buildings is going back into the fire service, which is what provides the service. So you're saying that the town is not move, losing $200,000 a year uh, <coughs> due to people not paying uh, for it? Oh, certainly there is, I mean, the <coughs> there is the issue of non-payment and we have, um, you know, we work with the third party to, f on billing uh, to collect um, that, that money. If it's not a $20,000 problem, no, there's, there's some leakage, but mostly it's just a function of uh, we spend more for the paramedics than we bring in in revenue, but that's okay because it's the town providing a service that the town needs. And if you want to think about it as a subsidy of $20,000, you can, but really it's a case of um, the Enterprise Fund subsidizing the fire department or, or offsetting the cost of the fire department. Um, the recreation department, for example, runs with a small deficit and the town essentially subsidizes recreation. They, f they have fees for all their programs, but they don't quite cover cost. And yet it's an important town function to have. So we, um, you have a, we run a small imbalance there every year as well. So it's, it's, this is part of how we handle accounting as opposed to um, the funds aren't supposed to necessarily come out balanced. Over half of our budget is directed towards the Westford Public Schools. Yet the school committee keeps making the case for spending more on top of the override we just recently had. Um, what is your position regarding the school funding and how can we control the school funding or spending, I should say? Well, <clears throat> you know, we're one town. And in fact, when you do a budget in August, every department will probably ask for more than we have. That's been true last year, even before that, um, yeah, I, have, I was on a task force uh, with FinCom, Dennis, Ro Dennis Rona, uh, and Tom Clay, uh, for the selectmen, looking at staffing. And our police and fire are understaffed. We had a plan to hire eight new firefighter paramedics and five new officers over two years. It didn't happen because the budget wouldn't allow it. We ended up with uh, the first year two and two. <clears throat> this budget, we get uh, one officer and, and two more uh, firefighter and firefighter paramedics was still down two and four compared to the plan. So every department comes in with, the highway department has added a person in over a decade. In fact, I think they're actually down a person because we had a retirement we didn't replace. So every department needs more than we give them. The difference is, is the school department is a separate entity of the school committee. So the budget comes in separately. And so if they request more than we, um, have it just it makes the headline as opposed to any other department that also has that same problem um hmm. and i think we worked we work very well together we say well superintendent town manager uh school committee selectman fincom how do we um you know, deal with this and this year we the school committee and the superintendent prioritized sort of three um you know buckets of of uh funding that they needed that, that was not really able to be budgeted um, we took a look at that. We were able to find some money to handle um, the most pressing issues, reading specialists. Um, and we've had a discussion that um, 
we're going to be monitoring. The second bucket was the concern about um, growth on Route 110, new apartment buildings, what that might mean for a school age population and therefore hiring uh, more staff, more buses. <coughs> and we agreed just to not to fund that at springtime, I think, because we don't know yet what that impact will be. Over the summer, uh, we'll be checking regularly um, to determine what, as those buildings are, are built out and um, people move in and they register the kids for school, what's happening to enrollment. And um, if come fall time meeting, we've got enrollment issues that are requiring more staff, we'll revisit the budget at that point. Um, so I, I, I don't foresee a real, I don't, I don't see a problem here um, in terms of making the school budget work with the overall town budget, we've, we're making it work. Okay, now the next topic is, what do you think the future is of, or for, Drew Gardens? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, certainly, it's, 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 it's in private hands. Um, and we have, uh, of course, there was a discussion at town meeting about a possible restaurant um, third event at town meeting, uh, the, the revised plan. It was dismissed without a vote, so <coughs> um, no, no real discussion on it. Um, we have invited the owner to come back. I mean, he, he has uh, APRs. He has a duty to you know, farm that land. He knows that. He's you know, acknowledged that in past uh, board meetings. So um, you know, we'll, we'll be speaking with him. I think it's the next meeting on, on the 23rd about uh, what his plans are for the property now that the, the last uh, effort has fallen through. So that'll be interesting to see how that, um, what happens over there. A real point of contention in the town. Well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's funny when I, uh, on uh, Sunday afternoon, we dedicated a piece of Route uh, 225, in fact, right across the street from you, to be the John Robinson Highway. You dedicated what? The, uh, <coughs> a part of Route of uh, Concord Road, uh -huh. also State Route 225. Okay. Um, by the West Lawn Cemetery. Is, which is where Colonel John Robinson is buried. Colonel John Robinson was the um, commander of the Westford Minutemen on um, April 19th of 1775. Um, <coughs> he's buried at West Lawn. He also was a former selectman, actually. Um, and the, the point of the story is when he <coughs> moved here from Topsfield, he was looking for farmland, open land to farm. And it's kind of funny that here we are 250 years later, hmm. and our issue is still you know, farmland. It's near and dear to our hearts and who we are as a town. And so it's okay that it generates some controversy because it means it's important to us. We just need to you know, figure out how to make it work, that's all. The, the issue, he was looking for it. Now we're trying to find someone to farm it, so it's, it's flipped. We're trying to save it, we're trying to preserve it now, correct. So um, we could find a farmer. <clears throat> well, no, it's it's, it's in private hands, so it's up to the town to find a farmer, it's up to um, the owner to have an agricultural plan that allows him to, to farm it, but, well, or he can. Well, that, that's what, you know, that it's set up as an APR for farmland, right? right so right. so I think that, that holds true, um, what I was saying about either you either have to make it into farm or not according to the current APR. Correct, yeah. uh, or, or agricultural use, so, you know, the for years it was a farm stand, and a farm stand is agricultural use, so that's you know, that's that certainly is was an option before, and it remains on the table. But that's that's his call, what he wants to do with it, <coughs> within the of course, APR parameters. Okay, so here's a fun one. What was the most uncomfortable time you've had as a selectman? Um, it's a really easy question. We um, <laughs> you know, we had the uh, New materials asphalt plant, um, mm. and um, I think my first meeting as a board member when I was first elected was uh, on that topic, <coughs> and um, I was among those who chose to, you know, to to, to litigate and and, pre and uh, prevent the plant from being built. So you know, to move forward <coughs> um, three four years, I guess, and have to. Uh, make a decision that it was time to, to settle, um, knowing it was an unpopular decision um, that was not comfortable. And of course, the reaction from me in town was quite you know, uh, unhappy, <clears throat> and I don't really blame them. I mean, it was uh, mm. um, you know, not one of our easier decisions to make. So it was, it, was, it was a difficult time. That was certainly hard. Wow, interesting. 
what would you like to share with the audience that I didn't ask you yet? Um, <clears throat> you know, I think this, if you look ahead to the, what's, what's coming up, um, you know, one issue is how do we, um, for the last Tuesday discussion about Town Farm, uh, which is the, the building on uh, Town Farm Road behind Rogers Fire Station across the street from the bus station that it was originally the Town Poor Farm. Um, you know, before we had welfare <coughs> as, as, as a state function, towns took care of it on their own. Another fun part of, of uh, Colonel Robinson when I gave that little speech was um, in 1768, the Board of Selectmen appropriated eight shillings to buy a gray coat and a pair of breeches for a town resident who was freezing. Um, mm -hmm. So we've had a long tradition of the town taking care of welfare, mm -hmm. and the town poor farm is how we did it in the 1800s. Um, and both a good thing and a bad thing. We took care of our own, but we didn't do it always in the best way. Um, that building is one of, I think, two left in the state. <coughs> But it's need a lot of work. Doesn't really have a good town function. We've uh, declared a surplus as a board of selectmen. And of course, now that, what, what do we do with it? You know, um, I don't really want to see it demolished. Uh, we have to find another use. So I think probably on on next Tuesday we'll be setting up a task force to take a look at what to do with it. And the other question, of course, is town center. Um, you know, we purchased 63 Main Street, <coughs> to the, white, the yellow house that had burned, trying to maintain our our control over the town center. Um, but you have to think about what, <coughs> what to do with that building long term. Um, and Elizabeth Almeida, one of the selectmen, is, is chair of that committee. But um, you know, as a board, we need to think about uh, you know, the future for, for town center and how do we accommodate uh, a new town center building with more meeting space, more office space, that building, and also the potential that uh, our school oven building is the Millennium School. As the name implies, it was meant to last a short period of time around the Millennium. It's gone well beyond its expected useful life. The roof is about, we think, three years or so left in it. So there's a decision to be made about what to do with the school administration offices and um, you know, where they should go. So there is sort of a sort of collective decision to make about town buildings. Um, our IT department is in an old firehouse. We want to move them into uh, the new town center building. So we have a collective decision about town assets and um, town departments and how to you know, house everybody and what to do with this property over the next you know, year or two or three. Mm -hmm. So we're getting down to the bottom of this half an hour. In closing, what would you like to accomplish in your next term and why should people vote for you? So um, <clears throat> I think I mentioned uh, what part of it is the town safety, um, is town and school safety task force. I want to see that um, have recommendations and move forward to implement those recommendations. <clears throat> I think it's really um, important. Next time we have another, another tragedy, I don't want to say, well, we're still working on it. We have, we have to have a plan that is being put in place. Um, you know, secondly, I think it is important that we do figure out what we want to do with our town structural assets, because um, there's a cost to all of that. And uh, you know, the good news is we have some debt being paid off from schools, um, and so we can afford to do some new construction without um, a change to the tax levy, <clears throat> but we can't do all of it. So we have to be smart about what we do. And um, and, and thirdly, I've you know, kind of com committed to public safety and uh, um, not just the um, police and fire staff and I think we need to address still, uh, but also um, pension safety. You know, I, I view that's part of, of the, the role. Um, we've over the past uh, three, four years, put in place uh, sidewalks around some of our schools and expanded the one in Abnasset. And now we want to uh, <clears throat> look at what, what we do next to, again, make our schools safer places for students to walk to and, and, um, and be around. Well, I want to thank you, Scott, uh, very much for being here. Uh, and we learned a little bit more, more about you, asked you a few tough questions. My name is Kathy Lynch. I'm the chair of the West Republican Town Committee and the new host for the Second Opinion Show. Um, thank you. And if you ever get confused or you want some more information about a particular topic, get a second opinion. Mm -hmm.